Hello and welcome to Plus One to Gaming. I'm Chris. I'm Eric. And joining us once again are our lifelong friends and table mates, Billy and Mark. Hey guys. How's it going? Hey, what's up? Not too much. We are we finally have the book. Got it on Friday, so had a couple days to peruse its contents. And we are going to roll into the first adventure from Candlekeep Mysteries. The Joy of Interdimensional Spaces. So I'm going to do a brief recap, and we'll just jump right in. How does that sound? Sounds great. Yep. What was the title again? The Joy of Interdimensional Spaces. Fun title. Wait, did I say extra dimensional? Uh, you said interdimensional. Oh, sorry. The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. My mistake. I wasn't looking at it. Still a fun there's title. So, there's so many different types of spaces. Demi planes and dimensions. It's it's easy to get them conf- confused. But on the last exciting adventure of Dungeons and Dragon Ball Z, our heroes embarked on a routine mission escorting Bongo, the furbolg trader, on a time sensitive errand. Traveling through the Mirkwood Forest, they were accosted by a specter in the fog. Spooked, Bongo's companion Rolf took off taking the wagon into a nearby cemetery where it broke its wheel. The specter was revealed to be a ruse by virtue of Teruvian's arrow. In the nearby mausoleum, they discovered a grave robbing operation in progress. The thief, however, was suspended in a gelatinous cube. After defeating the cube, the party apprehended the thief and returned the stolen items. Within the cube, they also found a strange book. After fixing the wagon, the group took off once again, the fog now dispersed. Making haste through the night, dawn's morning light now creeps over the horizon. In the distance, wreathed in the warm halo of the rising sun looms an enormous castle. Its many tiers and layers are dotted with an abundance of candles, giving it the appearance of an enormous cake. Bongo, the driver, says to you, Well, man, looks like we're almost there. Really appreciate the help. Can't wait to drop this stuff off and go jump in the hot springs, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you should show them book wizards that old tome you found. Maybe they'd let you in and use them too. Real nice place it is in there. What do you guys do? I mean, that place looks like a cake. I love it. Um, I'm all for going in and just, I don't know, nom nom nom. Maybe, I don't know. I agree we should go into the cake building. Yes, I'll follow you. I'm a little peckish myself. No worry, well, won't be too much longer. Let's get there, Rolf. And you travel along the road. Eventually, you come up to a large, massive gate. It's a double gate, three times the height of a human, wrought in black metal. One of the gates is closed. The other one is opened just far enough to admit visitors. As you approach... A dwarven priest dressed in purple vestments approaches you. Oi, is that is that Bongo? Hey man, sorry we're running a little behind, but I brought the goods for you. And as you pull up, he uh, you see this priest. He and Bongo make small talk for a few moments. Oh, Bongo, we were waiting for you. We were getting kind of worried. I thought figured maybe the the goods would have gone bad. Oh, no, don't worry. We had got held up a little bit in Mirkwood Forest, but my uh, new friends here, they really helped me out, helped me get here on time. Why don't you say hello? You guys want to introduce yourselves to the uh, to the priest? Oh, oh, hi. I'm Tammy Rainbow. I just love your purple outfit. It really, really shines. I am a cleric of the Raven Queen kind of my bff so uh you know being you religi buddies besties for life <laughs> we get scholars and sages and and priests and priestesses of all sorts through here certainly there might be a few disciples of the raven queen within these walls pleasure to meet you my name is Fremis, and i'm one of the avowed as the gatekeeper it's my job to make sure that Candlekeep receives a proper donation from its vit- visitors. 
Bongo here always always manages to make a generous contribution. And he uh, bows slightly to Bongo. Uh, he sizes up the lizard folk. Oi, and what's your name, lass? I am Levo Thyroxy, paladin of the swamp people. Oi, and what gold do ye follow? Nothing sadder without a paladin without a, without a deity is like a fighter without a sword. Give me a second, I'm looking. Oh cool, it's one that you can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, some god. Alright, some god. <laughs> some god I can't pronounce and I'm not gonna try. Is this Samuania? Yeah. <laughs> Samuania. Yeah, try, try, doing, try, try that doing that in... Samuania. Samuania. Sam... Ooh. See, I don't know where to break it up. Samuania. Simuanya? Simuanya? All right, here we go. My god is Simuanya. She's the deity of survival and propagation. Her symbol is an egg, and she is a neutral god. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sure there's also a great amount of literature you could peruse here, proving you can provide the proper donation, of course. And what of this dark elf? Are you also on this religious crusade? No, <laughs> hardly. Gods mean very little to me, although I have plenty of respect for how everyone wants to worship and live their own life. I'm mostly here for the adventure, out to see the world. Been underground a bit too long. Aye, well, seems that your adventures have taken you far. Welcome to Candle Deep. Now, we're going to let uh, Bongo go ahead so he can get his wares inside before they expire, but... um. We would graciously welcome you into our into our castle, if provided you've got something you wish to donate. We typically look for anything unique, insightful works of art, written books, tomes, scrolls, lore. Did Bongo have the book? Who took the book that we had found at the I think mausoleum? Cammy did. I believe Do you Cammy still have that, Cammy? Mm-hmm. So Cammy reaches into her her backpack and and brings out. She reaches in, grabs a book, and as she takes it out, you see that it is a a journal that has sketches of unicorns on the cover, and it's sparkly. She quickly puts that back in her purse and says, "Oh no, never mind. That's that. No, not, not that one. That's he, um." He actually kind of like bit. he eyed that a little bit. Seemed seemed kind of. I don't think he actually has seen anything like that before. So she she puts her Lisa Frank journal back uh, into her backpack and then pulls out the tome that was within the gelatinous cube. Um, really, we haven't had a chance to haven't had a chance to look at it, so I don't even know what it is. But she brings it out and she goes, "Um, Mr. Friendless, I believe. First of all, I'm your friend, so you're not friendless anymore. But I think this is something you'd be interested in, right?" Oh, let me see what you have there. Uh, he opens it up, flips through some pages. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. And then he closes it shut loudly. I can't read a thing. Oh, illiteracy is a real big problem. Um, I mean, I could, I guess I could help you read um, a little bit. I mean, so first of all, you got to learn what the letters are. So there's a song that I learned. And he, he's watching you patiently. So, I mean, you know what? I'll just, we can talk about it later. Just, you can always come find me. You have to sound them out. Yeah, yeah. Or perhaps you just have to learn a different language. Parmac, oh Parmac. And uh, a few moments later, a young uh, human wearing similar but less ornate vestments uh, comes out. Or Parmac. I want you to take this to the um, to the sanctum and have them evaluate it. And he takes the book and runs off. And Frempus turns back to you and says, "Might be just a few moments. Sometimes this happens where we just can't. We just don't know the language. It could be anything. So we have a range of scribes inside." who can decipher it and make sure that it is a unique piece that will contribute to the library. And if it is, well, then you're welcome to come in. So should be just a few moments. I wouldn't wait too long. So you might have to... Uh, Levo reaches into her bag and walks up to Friendless and hands him 
kind of like a handful of small rat skulls that have been intricately carved with like little runes and stuff. I also would like to donate these. And and tell me, what's the significance of these? He's looking at the, the runes and the inscriptions. These are trophies of my most recent kill. Not a grand kill, but a kill nonetheless. And here, what what's the significance of these writings? Uh, they say dead rat skull. And this charring, what's the meaning of this? What was that word you said? Chatting? Charring. Charring. It's like when it's burned. Oh. Do you not speak set, in bad Scottish accents? <laughs> we set the room on fire a little bit. No big deal. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, yes, I think I believe this is to be an acceptable tradition. Tis a tale of, of adventure and cunning. I mean, if you're setting up like a little space for that book, you may as well put these with it. It's like part of the, the story. Ah, like a full collection. Yes, yes, these are acceptable. Uh, and he puts them in a, uh, in a pouch and calls for a runner who goes to to deliver um and then he looks at teruvian well what what contribution are you going to make contribution teruvian rummages through his bag what uh what how how about this staff well pulls out a plain wooden staff with a small amount of carving at the end and holds it up out of no shortage of staves in in within these holes you said you were from the underground. Have you no law from, from there? You prefer literature, I take it. Lit- literature? Any kind of documentation that will tell a story or give insight, perspective, or wisdom? I have the tome that encouraged me to set off on my adventure, although that was a long time ago, so I don't guess I need it anymore try not to keep sentimental attachments pulls out kind of a folded scroll that looks quite tattered and old a little damp and musty this was a description of the first adventure of Delmarion who was a leader of my clan he takes it delicately with great care unfurls it and reads it he folds it back up, nods at you approvingly. Aye, this is exactly the kind of donation that we're looking for. He bows to you. It's Teruvian bows. You probably know most of that, but it was the first descriptions I'd ever seen of the world above ground. Well, if it must have stirred you so to change your life in such a drastic way, then surely it's an adequate contribution to enter the keep. I thank you for your donation. Uh, a few moments later, the runner comes back and whispers into Frembus's ear uh, before running off again. And he looks over at uh, Cammy. Uh, interesting. Seems that you've brought us an acceptable donation. Before I welcome you to Candlekeep, you must accept the end user orders of recurrence. All who enter Candlekeep must agree to the orders. Rules set forth by our staff to prevent misconduct. Violating one or more of these orders results in banishment from Candlekeep, and the banished are seldom allowed to return. The rules are simple. No fighting. No stealing. No carping. No damaging, marking, or otherwise modifying the works. Do you accept these terms? Not sure why I did Yoda at that point. Accept these terms, you must. I accept these terms. Oh, yes, yes, sure. That sounds good to me. He nods and says, I bind you to your word, and faint magical chains surround you momentarily before dissipating. Please feel free to make use of the amenities. He points out a building to the left. That's the bath and steam house, where you can take respite after your travels. Next to it's the smithy and the stables. That there is the house of rest, where you can take lodgings. The hot tavern be next door. On the far side of the court is the Emerald Door, which is where all the great works in Candlekeep are held. Only the avowed and those deemed worthy may enter there. If you require anything, our runner will bring you the works, or a copy if they are deemed too precious, which you will make a generous donation for. There is also the General Store, and the Pillars of Pedagogy, which is where visitors may study the works of the library and conduct research. Should you need anything, 
a member of the Avel de la Servia. You walk through the gate, and you are in a large courtyard. So essentially, <laughs> you're standing at the gatehouse, the main entrance. You came up through a road and past these double doors. Immediately to your left, you see the steam and bathhouse, and it's a massive courtyard. Uh, on the very far side, you can see the emerald door that Fem- Frembus was talking about. Um, it is huge, just like this massive, um, ominous looking green door that's intricately and ornately designed. Uh, and then to your left, you can see the, um, the, the inn, the tavern, and also a, uh, basically it's like a publishing house where they, the house of the binder, where they copy and transcribe works. Occasionally you'll see a runner carrying stuff to and from the house of the binder through the emerald door or to the pillars of pedagogy where people are studying it's morning time so people are out and about kind of just going about their their business um you see a range of you know sages and scholars and you know aristocratic type folks who are uh, well learned seeking more knowledge what do you guys do i don't know about you guys but I mean, we've been traveling all night, and I mean, I got crypt juice on me, so I'd really like to go to the bathhouse. I mean, if you'd give me, I don't know, half an hour, that'd be fantastic. I would enjoy a steam also. My eyes require moistening. Okay, I'm in. All right, so you enter the bath and steam house, just like a large spa and sauna. You know, it's open there's also you know places to get like hot stone massage this is just like a, a place to relax you uh as you walk in there's you know people bathing it is quiet and relaxing in here but over in one of the pools you see a familiar face uh, sitting in one of the uh you know hot stone springs is bongi and his fond companion rolf oh hey guys you made it in oh that's wonderful Hey, you want to come join me? Rolf uh, lets out a generous oof. Yes, Furbog Trader, I would love to come in and join you. And Levo just doffs all her like piecemeal armor and bags and shit and just throws it on the floor and gets in that sweet, sweet pool. All right, you slink in. There's a place to put your stuff. She doesn't care. She just leaves it on the ground. <laughs> Cammy folds up her stuff <laughs> nice and sweet and puts her cat helmet on top, like makes a nice pile. And she's in her like, I would say like linen under clothes, I guess. And she hops in the pool as well. Yeah. And they if you know, you guys can make this up as you go. Like they have like towels and stuff for modesty. You don't have to be buck ass nude or anything. Levo's full on naked, but she doesn't have any like genitalia that you can see because yeah, she's, she's a fucking lizard. <laughs> so it's not, I don't think she's turning eyes, but it's only because it's just a fucking seven foot tall lizard folk in here. Yeah. Not because of creepy thing yeah and i think she would have to probably because i don't know how deep these are to accommodate but there's a deep end there's definitely a deep end because ogre there's a there's there's all sorts of variety of in size of folk that come furbogs are big too right yeah furbogs are big too yeah we went to big people yeah so you guys are on the deep end rolf's probably over there too doggy paddling (laughs) so truvian's kind of hesitates for a while and then eventually takes off his boots and kind of dangles his feet in seated on the edge near everyone so as you guys are sitting um one of the one of the priests that come over one of the about you know smoking a long pipe comes over and starts uh chatting up bongo uh he comes over oh hey bongo just wanted to say thanks for for the delivery. We really appreciate it as always. Oh, no problem, man. Happy to be of service, you know. Uh, I want to introduce you to some friends here. They really helped me out um, in making sure that I got here on time. Uh, he points to uh, to you all. This is Levo. This is Cammy. This is Teruvian, and there's just a real great group of people solved this mystery in this forest where there's this creepy ghost man and really spooked us out but it just turned out to be a grave robber really good folks these guys are so whatever you can do to take care of them you know they're good friends of mine oh well any good friend of bongo is a friend of ours thank you um you said that uh you solved a 
mystery of sorts. Is that right? And he looks uh looks at looks at you all. Oh yeah, we totally solved that you mystery. Say that. Three three certified brain geniuses for sure. A hundred percent. Well, I'm actually in a bit of a bind and I could use uh, a good set of detectives, as it were. Cammy hops up from where she is and salutes, says, Detective Rainbow, at your service. Oh, Detective Rainbow, that's very, very prominent. Uh, yes, I. one of the adjuncts that teaches here has gone missing, and he's leading a class in the rule of curses soon. And a lot of people have paid for these classes, and it would just... It's not like him to just up and vanish, but we certainly want to make sure that we're able to deliver on our promise. So I need to go and make preparations for, for the speaking event. I would love for you, if you can, look for Professor Matrius. Uh, you can start with his room. I'll you know, tell you where it is. Uh, see if you can find any evidence of where he might have gone, where he might have been. Uh, if you could, I would be most appreciative. Sounds easy enough. I think we could handle that. Of course. We, we have his uh, portrait. Um, we take portraits of uh, all of the adjuncts that, um, that teach here. So you know what he looks like when you, when you actually find him. But um, yes, I will have a run to show you where his room is. You can start from there. But also one of the avowed will accompany you on your journey just to make sure that you don't wander into any places or if you need access to any places that you can have that proper authority. But I am grateful. And when you find him, I will be in the pillars preparing for the course thank you thank you big thank you thank you thank you he's flustered and he's got all these papers and stuff and he uh with his pipe smoke trailing behind him uh runs off levo has been under the water this time <laughs> she can hold her breath for well, a few minutes i don't think i'll be able to do that any other time so i'm taking use of that racial <laughs> <laughs> all right do you have a point of inspiration no i don't Oh, you have one now. Two now. One. <laughs> For holding your breath. I feel like that was a very in-character thing to do. As soon as she got in the water, <laughs> she just went under and has been there the whole time. Like an alligator, just like... Yes. <laughs> barely your eyes, everyone's more like, poke <laughs> out and just her eyes just goes back in. Is that true? Because um, I would love that if she just kind of came up with just eyes only like a predator, just like making so, sure there's nothing to eat. <laughs> I did originally envision her like very alligator esque with just like the top half of her head. Like if the delineation of her head is her mouth, like her top lip is above water, but her bottom lip is below water, and she's just like her mouth's open and she's cycling water through her mouth and like dipping an eye in on one side and then dipping an eye on the other side. But then I remembered I have hold breath. I love that. So she did. She did both. All of the above. Cami's gonna hop out. So she hops out. Drives herself off very quickly and dons her armor, which takes you know a minute or so. And she's like, all right, come on, guys, hurry up, hurry up. We got a mission. She did not realize that uh, she, not everybody heard the entire conversation. <laughs> so she is unaware that. So she, you know, turns uh, to Lev and like, are you coming? Let's go. Lev gets out of the water. I could hear you under there. Don't worry. I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> no need to explain it a second time. She's an apex predator. I, think I have ear holes that work the, well underwater. <laughs> the uh, pillars were just across the courtyard mm -hmm. when we came in. Shall we head there? Sure. Let lead the way. As you uh, as you guys are getting ready, like drying off, putting back on your gear, uh, a runner comes back in. Uh, this runner is a young tiefling. She comes up in her more modest vestments. Uh, she says, hello, I'm Irony. I'll be accompanying you on your on your errand, and I will show you where Professor Matrice's quarters are, so you can begin your search there. Excellent. Lead on, then. Follow me. And she takes you over to the pillars. They're just, like, enormous towers. And on each tower, there's levels where, you know, there's different quarters and rooms where people can... Uh, that people can reserve and rent for, you know, study. But as you walk, eventually you come to a door, and Irony uh, has a small peach, uh, a small piece of parchment with some ancient arcane scrawlings written on it. 
She holds it up to the door and swipes. It glows red briefly, then green. Uh, you hear a magical lock inside. Thunk! And the door opens, and she beckons you inside. Levo walks in. Camry follows. Yeah, Truvian does as well. Yes, so this is Professor Matrius's quarters. Here's a picture of him, and here's what he looks like. And she shows you, or she gives it to you. It's just a picture of a old-looking sage with human male with white scraggly beard and thinning hair on top. Please, whatever you need, I, I'm happy to help if you need any anything at all. I'm here to serve you, but as quickly as we can, it would be great to find Professor Matrius. Are we in his quarters, did you say? Yes, you just arrived into his quarters. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want to start looking around. I want to, yeah. I want to like sniff and see if I can get a scent of this dude too. Cam- Cammy's going to go over to his, I guess his desk is probably the most likely, and she's going to start looking around through his desk, half looking for him and half just because she's curious. Yes. So- Cheruvian's going to go into the cabinets and drawers to see if it looks like anything's been taken or packed. So in this room, there's you know a large table. It's sprawled out with some some notes papers books uh, and then there's like a a smaller table like a like a main study which is kind of where you're standing cami and on it you see like opened a, a very thick tome that seems to be it, it is open but it seems to be the the buckle of it is like inlaid with looks to be a precious metals and a large red ruby or gem um, seems to be just like a, a just by looking at it you can tell that it's probably a very rare or expensive book what is the book about she she looks to see like the cover or just skims over it very very quickly just to see yep you look at the cover and you see the bust of what appears to be a very intense looking wizard uh, he has a bald head with pointed ears Uh, searing eyes where his eyes are um, the color of his eyes have been inlaid with a red gem that seemed to shimmer and sparkle and follow you if you like move the cover a sharp goatee that comes down to a point but it doesn't have a title Um, it just has some kind of uh, it's it's very innately designed with different patterns and runes that you can't quite decipher does it look like it's a spell book? Like she's definitely not well versed in magic, you know, since she uses divine power. But w- would she recognize it as a spell book? Uh, you, you like flipping through it, you t- can tell immediately it's not a spell book. It's just a discourse on extra dimensional planes and different things of that nature. Okay, so the the runes are just on the cover, but inside is like words I can read. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought it was all in those runes. Um, okay. Um, she takes an, a note of it, but she doesn't really, as of now, she keeps looking. Yep. And as you um, flip through those pages, you saw like handwritten notes off in the margins as well. She's she's going to take a couple minutes to study all the handwritten notes just to see if she can get a good idea what he was doing most recently. Which uh, Yeah, roll an investigation. Yeah. All right, not her best, but uh, it's an eight investigation. Okay, so looking through these notes, um, you're looking at the margins and trying to decipher it, but the subject matter, because as it pertains to you, you don't really deal with the weave and its nuances. You find it heady and difficult to comprehend. But you think based off of the notion that it could be something interesting. Okay. Well, I um, I gesture for everybody to come over to to her, and I explain that I you know that I found it, and it looks pretty interesting, but I just can't really piece it together just yet. Truvian, I guess we'll come over and see what she's talking about. So, Truvian, you see this large, heavy, ornately designed book. The book deals in magic that's pretty clear to understand it's like a discourse on different planes uh and then you you also see these you know handwritten notes what do you want to make or what do you want to do with them 
he is familiar with draw magic, so I guess the first thing he would do would be to see if any anything in the draw sphere sphere of magic jumps out at him. Anything recognizable sure. from that way. Try Arcana. Roll an Arcana check. Okay. Since you're applying uh, like drow magical principles to this problem. Twelve. Okay. So within within drow society, you recall tales of drow wizards who would create extra dimensional spaces, you know, to to make rooms inside of a cave seem a lot bigger than what they normally are. And you also remember that these wizards would always have like a command word. And that command word is how they could open or close the portal to these spaces. And Mm -hmm. in these margins, you see these handwritten notes. They almost look like arcanic calculations. And at the end of the like calculation, you see a word written in this sort of magical language that is, it reads out to be scepter. So Teruvian kind of runs his hands over the pages and recounts that he's seen and heard of similar legends and points out that the word, perhaps there's a way to find where he went by using the scepter word to open some sort of portal and follow him. So did you say that word out loud? He points, he like points to it as he's running his hand. Like, so when he gets to the end, he was like, and this appears to be the word he used. Okay. Kami can read it. As soon as he points to it, she's like, Scepter? As uh, as you say that, or as soon as you finish saying that, uh, shimmering translucent doors appear in the middle of the room. Yes, that that word appears to have worked. I mean, I think we found out where he went, maybe. Who wants to go first? I mean, Truvin kind first. of yeah. bows and points his hand and says, ladies first. So Kami takes out her her shield because she doesn't really know where she's going or where this goes uh, so oh. she doesn't actually have her scepter in her hand but she has her shield out and is kind of like cowering a little bit behind it as she approaches the door and then she i guess there's does it have a, a doorknob a handle that she can swing open this uh extra dimensional door um let's see shimmering or is it like a doors? like a portal i think it's more like, it's more like a more like a portal like um like a window of light and Irony's like, oh, oh, so you're going to go in there, huh? I mean, we were tasked to find him. I mean, we can't. He's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. probably not here. So, nope, I mean. I, I think you're right on track. I, so are, you, are you coming too? No, I don't want to die. But good luck. Well, that's encouraging. I do hope you find him. She goes through the portal. Uh, she she turned As she's walking to go through the portal, she turns around to make sure that Levo is following her. Is a little uh, more comfortable if Levo's following her. Yeah, Levo's gonna come. I wanted to while I was in the room try to get this dude's scent. I don't know if that's a yes. Like, I guess it doesn't matter much. I but that's mostly like she's sniffing and smelling his like. Is this his bedroom too? Did you say or is yeah, it just his also office? His, uh, no, just his. Um, it's like a study room. Okay, there's not like a bed or like a couch or something that he would spend a lot of time on that I can sniff. A desk chair. Yeah. Yeah. Chair. Yeah. I want to. I want to smell around, see if I can get a scent of this guy. Yeah. Before. He has like a robe this laying. Is, this is. This is what she was doing while they were reading the book, at least. Perfect. Yes, there are there are his personal effects in mm-hmm. here. His you know satchel contained with books, uh, an overcoat uh, or over robe that he would wear on cold cold days. Roll. What do you want to do? Survival, maybe. Uh, I was thinking perception, but I don't think it matters. Yeah, so I was just thinking of like your tracking, and that could be yeah. like a survival. Yeah, we could do that. It does Maybe. matter, because I have a point of perception and not in survival. I, I rolled a natural 16, so it would be 18 with survival. Awesome, yeah. Just, you're on the hunt, and you feel confident that you have the... you. How would this work? You it, You store in your olfactory memory the Mm -hmm. scent profile of this man and it is you hold it in your mind perfect and now i think you have advantage on any check to locate him maybe via smell perfect cool 
Um, so then, yeah, Levo comes from, like, the corner of the room where his robe and stuff were and walks toward the, uh, the door. I have his scent. Let us go. All right, Truvian will follow them through as well. Whoosh! You walk through a magical portal. And on the other side, it is not at all what you might have expected. You are standing in the foyer of a luxurious mansion. Uh, luxurious, but not ostentatious. It's open, uh, airy. The floors are made of hard wood. There's bronze and brass fixtures on the doors, and it just seems very just nice and, and fancy, but not overdone. And Cammy mm-hmm. lets off a sigh of relief and puts down her guard a little bit when she sees where she is. It's better than the nine hells. And it is it is quiet. It's eerily quiet. And as you're kind of in this space and just like looking around, there are windows on the walls. Outside, there's this almost like luminescent indigo miasma just swirling outside. And that miasma is actually like, you know, faintly tinting the room with this pallid green indigo tint and that's i don't know if that's something that your characters might have encountered before or not but might be a little disconcerting that sounds very disconcerting cami's definitely used to like the gray squalid mist of you know her homeland so it definitely doesn't scare her as much as shadowfell because shadowfell has that like miasma but it's like gray colorless you know mist um so this one is not really that bad because it's Colorful, and she likes colors. All right. So as you guys walk through, you kind of like, you know, get at your, you look around a little bit. Um, just as you kind of step through and get your senses, you see who a head pop right around the corner, make a startled expression. Oh, 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 I'm relieved. Uh, and you see Professor Matrius standing right before you. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. I stepped through this portal i was in a fit of excitement after i stumbled upon well you wouldn't believe what i found but after i walked through you wouldn't believe it i got closed in here and i couldn't get myself out oh but now that you opened it from the other side now i can go back through i'm much appreciated thank you i don't know where i'm going with these accents but bear with me they'll find themselves yeah you'll end up with one that you like that just takes a bit it does so she turns and she she says professor matrix i assume yes yes that's me i'm professor matrix and i'm on quite a quite an errand quite an errand indeed i have to i I have to go teach a class here soon and i i'm I'm afraid i'm running late i'm so glad you opened the portal for me though is the portal still open uh right now it's still open um it does it does seem to be like fading a little bit but professor matrius he turns to you and says i don't have much time but i i'm so excited i found this place and now that i know how to get back in and out oh it should be easy but i have a favor to ask of you i haven't been able to explore this place very much but this is this is a very rare find indeed would you do me a favor and just search this place for me and gather what notes and artifacts you can so i can come back and study it because I just, oh, I my mind is racing with all of the opportunities. I'll certainly pay for your troubles. Cammy thinks for a second. She She's not sure just because he got stuck in here and she doesn't want to get stuck in here. If he goes to, back through the portal and it closes, then they're stuck. She's going to bring that up. Um, as our Matrix, how, how are we not going to get stuck here? I mean, if you use the portal and open it and came through and then it closed, how are we sure that it's not going to close on us and then we're going to be closing here too oh yes yes that's a good point well i know this i know the word to get in it's scepter well you know it too because you must have figured it out but if there's a safe word to get in there's a command word to get out and i'm confident based on what i know of who's well let me take a step back (sighs) sorry for my for my excitement what we have here is a great and powerful wizard's secret mansion she was a, a great friend of the of the keep her name was Fistandia, and she would use this mansion that she 
as she hid right here in this in this room to conduct her research when she was here at the keep. And so I'm confident that she has the command word hidden somewhere within this within this mansion. And quite specifically, I'd like you to find out what it is. But don't worry about getting stuck here, though. Uh, as soon as I'm finished with my course, I'll come back and open the gate and let you out, if you haven't found it already. But it seemed like it didn't take you too long to get inside, so I think you might be up to the task. What do you say? I think we can handle it. Kami is a little nervous about doing it because she is aware of how absent-minded and laser-focused in, in the same way that a uh, some of these scholars can be. So she is not 100% sure that even though he may mean to open it up, that he will not be sidetracked with something else and forget about it for for a while. We'll bring that up in dialogue. Cammy says that. I didn't hear Cammy say that. I heard Billy say that. <laughs> Professor Matrix, I, I don't know. I mean, you seem like a really nice guy and I like you and all, but you also seem a little bit airheaded and uh i know that you mean to let us out again but i mean you did get yourself locked in an extramental space so um i just i'm not 100 percent comfortable relying 100 percent on you for our safety and not being stuck in here for the rest of our lives i mean that would be really really bad oh, 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 oh. oh to be young again oh your candor is well taken no, no, this is, this is, this is stupendous. This is, this is, this is magnificent. There's no way I could forget about this. But, 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 but. I understand your concern. And you are a sharp young lady. I think it's quite prudent of you to keep yourself safe. I have an idea. I will have one of our Aval sit in the room and they'll be there to be able to let you out if I'm not able to come back. Would that make you feel better? Yes. I'd be a lot better with that, especially if, let's say, like every 20 minutes or, you know, ever so often he just, he'll say the, the command word just to reopen it, just so we feel a little comfortable that we're not stuck in here forever. Well, did you have some kind of handler? Someone, usually they send someone walking around with newcomers to the keep. I mean, it's, isn't it ironic? Don't you think? <laughs> Oh, you know, irony. irony. The little, the yes. little, the little oh, tiefling girl. Oh, irony, not ironic. Yes, irony. Oh, yes, sweet little girl. Okay. She, is, she's out there. I think that that would be blended. I want you, if you, if you can, try to find the command word to get to open the portal from this side and look for anything, oh, magical or unique or anything of interest. He, um, he holds up like a little statuette carving of an imp something like this uh this i'm going to take this out for study but anything that you find interesting it would be just a great effort to me i'm not as young as i used to be and going around carrying odd objects and magical artifacts i'm just my hips aren't used to aren't as used to it as they uh. but could you do an old man that favor we'll ha pay you handsomely for your troubles and your time I will do this for you, old man. He bows to Levo. Thank you kindly, lizard folk. I mean, we're already here, so might as well just keep searching around. I mean, the place seems pretty cool. Like, I like the colors. Um, oh, it and... is certainly a marvel. Uh, he pats you on the shoulder and says, And fear not, young one. I will tell irony as soon as I get out. And to keep the portal open, and you will have nothing to fear. And he gives you a, a, warm, a warm and comforting smile. And she nods. Yeah. And with that, he turns and walks through the portal. As he does, the um, portal, like, since a body has gone through it, uh, closes and looks like two doors closing shut. And as they slam shut from the other side, you hear Matrius scream. And the doors are closed. God, are you kidding me? I knew it. She takes out a goes into her backpack and takes out a piece of paper and writes scepter on it and then casts light on her her mace, holds it in front of the piece of paper and flips the paper over so she's reading it backwards and she she screams very loud, Rat Peck! Nothing happens. Damn it. I, I thought for sure that that was going to work. Uh, anybody else have any ideas? That's actually a good idea. 
So that's it for part one of the first adventure in Candlekeep Mysteries, The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. What mysteries does the mansion hold? And what happened to the hapless adjunct professor? Join us next time as our heroes, Cammy, Levo, and Teruvian, explore Fistandia's mansion to find the command word to escape and uncover its many secrets. Also, we did play a one-shot before Candlekeep Mysteries was released to prepare for this adventure. Unfortunately, we had some audio issues and I got food poisoning, so we weren't able to release the episode just yet. Still working on that, and we'll hopefully release it as a bonus episode, but for now, we're going to keep charging along with Candlekeep Mysteries. Speaking of which, we'd love to hear what you're doing in your Candlekeep games. How are you hooking the party in? Tweaking the scene or the setting? Or just overall you're enjoying this new book of adventures? Let us know in the comments section, or shoot us a note at plus one to gaming at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening. We really hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe to the channel whenever you get your podcasts or on YouTube to get all the latest episodes. We'll catch you next time.